Kenya remains committed to environmental sustainability, and in this regard, we have firmly anchored the environment pillar in our economic blueprint that we term Kenya Vision 2030. We are proud to be the only UN headquarters in the Global South, an honor that we appreciate and protect. We have therefore worked closely with the UN to provide support and facilities to the UN agencies based in Kenya and in our region so that they are able to achieve their mandate. Today I am pleased to report that we will provide land for the development of humanitarian and logistic hubs in three locations in Kenya, namely Naivasha, Nairobi, and Mombasa. We have also further provided land for the creation of a di diplomatic enclave adjacent to the United Nations office at the UN Nairobi complex. In addition, in addition and in order to enhance efficiency in the administration of diplomatic privileges, we have developed an integrated protocol management information system that creates an automated one-stop shop for tax exemptions, staff registration, issuance of diplomatic ID cards, registration and transfer of motor vehicles, among other online services. So Your Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I want to conclude my remarks by saying how proud we are as a country to co-host this commemoration of UNEP at 50 here at its headquarters. I wish to once again reiterate Kenya's utmost support to the United Nations Environmental Program and reaffirm our commitment towards ensuring that it continues to deliver on its critical mandate. I also call upon all member states to continue to ensure that their commitments and support to this organization, which are critical in safeguarding our planet, our prosperity, are also given a key priority. I also wish, ladies and gentlemen, to take this opportunity to invite you all to two key events that I believe will enable us to consolidate the commitments we make this week. That is the Stockholm Plus 50, which Kenya is co-hosting with Sweden and will be held in Stockholm on the 2nd to the 3rd of June this year. This event will be a celebration of the 50 years of global environmental action, and more importantly, it will act as a springboard to accelerate the implementation of the UN Decade of Action to deliver the SDGs and to encourage the adoption of green post-COVID-19 recovery plans. Soon after Stockholm Plus 50, Kenya will also co-host with Portugal the UN Oceans Conference in Lisbon on the 27th of June to the 1st of July 2022. This conference will seek to propel the much-needed, science-based, innovative solutions to sustainability in the management of our oceans. We look forward to seeing you all in Stockholm and Lisbon. At this point, I would like to congratulate UNEA 5 for a successful assembly which has witnessed the adoption of the end plastic pollution resolution and several other resolutions culminating in a ministerial direct, uh, declaration. I know this was not easy. And for that reason, I want to commend and congratulate all member states for the dedication and diligence that you have shown towards prioritizing this real issue that affects our planet.
I also want to congratulate the Executive Director, Ms. Inger Anderson, for the fruitful results of this Assembly. And most importantly, recognize the implementing and coordinating role that this resolution has placed on you to ensure the modalities of the resolution are actioned and implemented by member states, and we assure you of our support in this endeavor. As we look forward, we must also look back. And I wish to recognize two individuals who championed the creation of an environmental organization and the hosting of UNEP here in Nairobi. They are the late Ambassador Joey Odera, who was Kenya's permanent representative to the UN and who played an instrumental role in ensuring that UNEP finds a home here in Nairobi. Equally worthy of recognition is the first UNEP Executive Director, the late Maurice Strong. Mr. Strong played a central leadership role in defining the character of the United Nations Environmental Program and in leading the Earth Summit, which is recognized as one of the most consequential UNEP conferences. Allow me also to recognize and appreciate all executive directors who followed Mr. Strong. Allow me also today to recognize the late Professor Wangari Madai, who championed practical and locally grown solutions to fight environmental degradation. I also wish to thank all member states who contributed to the, towards ensuring that UNEP obtained the support it required to host the two events this week, UNEA 5 and UNEP at 50. As we look forward towards the future of the United Nations Environmental Program, we, we want and I want to urge all stakeholders to enhance, mobilize, and prioritize support for this important organization. I urge all of us to support UNEP because it has without doubt demonstrated its critical role in ensuring a sustainable planet by tackling cross-cutting issues such as climate change, biodiversity loss, and plastic pollution. And in recognition, and in order to celebrate the 50 years of UNEP, the Kenyan government has decided to put forward the Amani and Mazingira Global Award that will be sponsored by the Kenyan government and the people of Kenya. This will be an award to persons or institutions who champion environmental sustainability and peace and will be a biannual award. It will be accompanied by a monetary award of 20,000 US dollars, and the first awardee will be announced on the 1st of June of this year, which is our Madaraka or Republic Day. Today marks a proud moment as we celebrate the extraordinary environment journey that we all have walked together as a global community. The Stockholm Conference in 1972 led to the establishment of the United Nations Environmental Program and galvanized the formation of environment ministries and agencies around the world. Since then, through a series of protocols, such as the 1987 Montreal Protocol for limiting emissions of gases, conferences such as the Earth Summit in 1992, as well as through systematic scientific research, UNEP has transformed into a formidable ecological consciousness for the world as it boldly championed the environment agenda. Progressively, over the last 50 years, 
UNEP has led the world to understand the centrality of environment in human existence, to appreciate the increased threats to the environment, and also the existential threat that exists to our planet. They have also helped us galvanize collective global action to protect our environment. The journey has not been easy. It has required UNEP to provide technical, diplomatic, as well as political leadership in the development of the core concept of sustainable development, and more importantly, to build ownership of these concepts at national level. As part of UNEP's core mission, it has required defining and enforcing rules and procedures for protecting the environment, such as limiting of emissions or stopping endangered species from becoming extinct. Through its scientifically driven agenda, UNEP has established a credible platform for countries to come together and act boldly to advance the global environment agenda. I commend the leadership of the United Nations and the UNEP family for successfully steering the environmental ship through troubled waters and remaining steadfast and focused in implementing your core mandate. So Your Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot talk about development, peace and security without highlighting, highlighting its nexus with climate change. Unchecked climate change will pose unacceptable risks to our security, our economies, our SDGs, and indeed our planet. It is only through a united front by all member states against the triple planetary crisis, namely climate change, nature, and pollution, that the Sustainable Development Goals will be achieved. Let us therefore commit to support UNEP to steer the environmental discussions towards tangible and sustainable solutions. Today is a moment to celebrate this incredible institution, its member states, and the people that bring it to life. Today is also a moment to celebrate environmental multilateralism, its highs, its lows, its opportunities, its challenges, and to advance the conversation on how we can continue to build on these achievements and lessons over the next 50 years. But before looking ahead, we need to look back. It is only through unpacking our lessons from the past that we can start to visualize and create our own future. The last 50 years have demonstrated an impressive record of environmental achievement. Much more is being learned, much more, much more is being done, and certainly a more lasting accomplishment has been the shaping of the multilateral institutions that will continue to protect our environment in the years to come. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, how did we get here? Looking back at the day UNEP came into being, at the end of the first United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, the Stockholm Conference held in 1972, that was the starting point of multilateral efforts to address environmental problems. And with the creation of UNEP came notable achievements of its governing council, which was composed at the time of only 58 member states. Hosting the secretariats of several multilateral environmental agreements and research bodies, co-establishing the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, and implementing the Global Environment Facility and the multilateral funds for the implementation of the Montreal Protocol, the creation of the Intergovernmental Montevideo Program on promoting and implementing environmental law, these are just a few examples. And then we keep forward to 2013, 
when the United Nations General Assembly adopted Resolution 67-213 to strengthen and upgrade UNEP to respond to growing environmental challenges. That was quickly followed by the designation of the UNEP Governing Council to what we have today, the United Nations Environment Assembly of the United Nations Environment Programme with universal membership. If 2013 was the year of strengthening UNEP's governing body and designing the foundations of UNEA, the task of the global community since then has been to follow through on the great commitments placed on this organization. And the results of the work of the Assembly are tangible. I do not have to remind you of this series of important resolutions that have been adopted since 2013, including the landmark resolution on plastics adopted just yesterday. The implications of this resolution are enormous. UNIA 5.2 and the special session on UNEP at 50 will certainly be remembered as one of the key, key global inter, international intergovernmental meetings on the environment. I wish to take this opportunity to thank the government of the Republic of Kenya for convening this special commemorative event and for inviting Botswana to be a part of the 50th anniversary celebrations of the United Nations Environmental Programme. Kenya continues to provide exemplary leadership in the fields of sustainable development, environmental management, and climate change. On behalf of the people and the government of Botswana, I therefore wish to applaud His Excellency President Kenyatta for his visionary leadership and stewardship. <clears throat> Not so long ago, the great Talmuds of COVID-19 that accompanied the commemorations of the 75th anniversary of the UN served a spectra of a dull moment itself, a useful reminder of how the promises to bequeath a safer planet to succeeding generations could be so encumbered within the blink of an eye. My delegation, therefore, welcomes the opportunity provided by this commemoration to reflect on our interactions with UNEP and of the future we want. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, Botswana applauds UNEP, its past and current leadership, for the impact the organization has had on our environmental management agenda. The organization remains a global authority on environmental matters. To this end, we welcome this commemoration as a moment to reflect on past achievements and to ponder on current challenges in order that in order to chart the way forward and strengthen this premier organization. This commemoration comes at a time when the world is faced with multifaceted challenges that continue to militate against the achievement of sustainable development and the protection of our planet. The stark reality is that the world is no longer what it was many years ago. The economic, environmental, and social challenges of the 21st century are varied and quite profound and have significantly altered the global sustainable development order. Economic activity and population growth, particularly in the developing countries, have compounded the already enormous strain placed on the world's natural resources and ecosystems. More, especially, more specifically, the impacts of climate change, desertification, loss of biodiversity, and growing levels of poverty are a painful reality of our times. In view of these challenges, it is essential for us as, a global, as global leaders to champion the balance between environment and development. To this end, UNEP provides a strong platform in terms of decision making, as well as an effective reference point, which we must support in whatever way possible. Your Excellency and distinguished guests, there are significant achievements that Botswana has realized within the sphere of environmental management. Botswana has updated and enacted new legislation and policy instruments to respond to the ever-evolving environmental challenges. In order to contribute effectively to the global challenge to address climate change, 
we have strengthened and updated our national determined contributions and developed the ch climate change policy and the national adaptation plan. We pursued these policy developments in line with the national transformation agenda, where we are focused on transforming the general socioeconomic and environmental status of Botswana. In keeping with our international obligations, Botswana has continued to ensure high standards in the sustainable management of biodiversity, rich ecosystems such as the Ogovango Delta, now listed as a World Heritage Site, and the Makhadi Wetlands System. We also continue to ensure that the abundant wildlife resources are protected and utilized sustainably. I am particularly proud to state that 40% of Botswana's land is under protected area status. The United Nations Environment Program at 50 is a time to reflect on the past and envision the future. It provides the opportunity to bolster international cooperation and stimulate collective action to address the tribal planetary crisis of climate change, nature, and biodiversity loss and pollution and waste. As we all know, no country or continent can address this global crisis alone. Each nation has a central role to play in protecting our people and planet. 50 years ago, after United Nations Conference on the Human Environment in Stockholm in June 1972, with the efforts of Ambassador Maurice Strong of Canada, many governments became convinced of the need to make climate and environment action a priority. And with Maurice Strong as United Nations Environment Program's first executive director, the first was clear to what nations need to do, make our environment safer, healthier, and better. During last year's COP26 in Glasgow, parties worked towards foreign action to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, while also pledging to take steps to adapting to climate impacts. Nations are constantly facing the threats of disrupted weather patterns, low food production, and rising sea levels that increase the risk of catastrophic flooding, among other challenges. In that regard, Nigeria pledged to work with other countries in achieving the goals of the Paris Agreement and in doing so has increased her conditional contribution to reduce greenhouse gas from 45% to 47%. Additionally, I outlined Nigeria's efforts and commitments towards transition to net zero ambition, which involve both environment and development related plans. As we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the United Nations Environment Program's existence, we load the efforts of the United Nations Environment Program and encourage broader action to outcome climate change, biodiversity, rising levels of pollution and waste being three major crises threatening our planet. Notably, desertification and drought are threatening lives and livelihoods, which further and underscores the need to boost biodiversity in ecosystem restoration. We thank the United Nations Environment Program for its role in reducing biodiversity loss and for being a major player in the global movement to slow deforestation, accelerate afforestation. 